Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is my huge, crazy, insane November TBR. So there are a lot of things happening in November and I remember I'm a mood reader so I try to set my TBR to reflect my mood for November. Well, like I said, there are a lot of things going on. So first off, I'm still very much in a spooky Halloween mood and there are plenty of books that I plan to read in October that I didn't get to. So there are some of those books that I would love to try and get to kind of in the beginning of November until spooky season fades a little bit more. Then there is also the Once Upon a Readathon happening throughout the month of November as well, and I have signed up to be on the Wolves team as I am a fan of Sasha from The Wild Sasha, her channel. I'll have her linked down below in the announcement to the Once Upon a Readathon linked down below in case you're interested in participating. So I have some books set aside for that readathon, as well as the fact that November is the last month in the fall season. I consider December almost completely winter um, just because of how cold it gets where I live and also I'm already thinking of uh, Christmas and New Year's which are in my mind winter holidays. So I want to be finishing my autumn TBR as well as the fact that December is coming up so I might start getting in the mood for some of those uh, winter holiday romances. Like I said, there's a lot going on. So this might be a little bit of a rapid fire TBR and I will definitely not get to all of these books. I'll be lucky if I get to maybe half of them, but I'm certainly going to try my darndest. So first off, let's start off with the remains of the spooky books that I may or may not get to depending on how quickly spooky season fades. So first off on my list, and they're not in any particular order, they're just how they're stacked next to me. But I have In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I had purchased this for Thriller Week as I wanted to read more Ruth Ware. Um, but I didn't quite get to this one. So this is, I believe it's another isolation thriller. And people are dying, being murdered. So it's supposed to be very spooky. It is one of her really early books. And I did read uh, one of her books. That's, I believe, the one published right after this one. And I had a little bit of struggle with the writing. But I still want to read this one nonetheless. Then I have White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. I was, I got this book for the uh, Haunted House week and I just didn't quite get to it. So I, I did start it very briefly. Um, it is about this blended family who moves to this new house um, and they have to live in it for a certain amount of time for the mom's job and they don't have to like pay for it. So that's a really great deal for them, but it's a haunted house. So what do you think is gonna happen? I know what I think is gonna happen. Spooky things are going to happen. I also have Babel by RF Kuang, and this I definitely wanna prioritize in November because it is a dark academia, which is a spooky season topic for me, but also just is fall vibes for me as well. And I was really excited to get to those, this one, really disappointed that I haven't gotten to it yet. So this is going to be high up on my priorities. It's literally about um, this student who tries to get into Babel, which is a part of Oxford, um, in order to learn to translate between Greek, Latin, and Mandarin, I believe. And in doing so, it like fuels the magic system, like the silver ley line magic system, whatever. Um, so it's a bit of a chonker, but I think as we head into colder months, hopefully I'll be more motivated to read some of these thicker books. So I really want this to be high up on my TBR. Then I have a whole bunch of witchy books, and I will be lucky if I get to two of them, I think. But I have five in total, so let's go on through them very quickly here. I have Payback's A Witch, and this is by Lana Harper. It's just one of those like rom-com witchy books and I was very much in the rude mood to read these earlier on. I also have Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. Again, rom-com witchy book. Hopefully I'll fly through it if I get to it. Then I have 
The Witch Haven, and this is by Sasha Payton Smith. I wanted to read it last year, but I couldn't get my hands on a copy, so this year I have it from the library. So I'm gonna try and read them all the way up until these books are expired from the library and I have to return them. So if I don't get to them, bummer, maybe I'll read them next year, but I would love to read them. Then I also have These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. And the final witch book that I have is The Monarchs, and this is by Cass Morgan and Danielle Payton. Danielle Page! <laughs> and this is the sequel to The Ravens, which I read last year for Spooky Season, and I very much enjoyed it. Those already are all the spooky books, and that could take up my entire November, but it's not going to, hopefully. So, I've got so many other books here that I want to read. I think the next one I'm most likely to read would probably be Spindle and Dagger, and this is by Jay Anderson Coates. This is like a kind of fairy tale feeling political intrigue of uh, this person's town gets taken over by this king, and she convinces the king that she's actually very valuable to him, so she becomes like a lady in his court, and then she has to try and figure out how to stop the king from rampaging and being a jerk. So. It's, it's a shorter one. I'm excited to kind of fly through this one on one of my days off. Then also from the library, I have a couple more books that were on my autumn TBR, including The Witch's Heart, and this is by Genevieve Gornacek, and this has to deal with Norse mythology, I believe, which I am super excited. I love reading mythology-based books, and it's about time that I got back to reading some more of those, so I am very excited. This has been on my TBR for quite a while. And I also have Hench, and this is by Natalie Zena Walcott. And this kind of follows our main character who's a temp worker who works for villain agencies, which sounds amazing, sounds so fun. This was recommended to me by someone I know in real life, and so I really want to read this one as well. Plus, the cover is very fall autumn -y, so. I also very much want to read it for that reason. I have set aside for the Once Upon a Readathon uh, would include What Once Was Mine. This is gonna take care of all the other, all the first set of prompts for the readathon, and it's the last Twisted Tales book I have yet to read until, well, except for Almost There, which is one that just came out. That's Tiana's story, but other than that, this is the last one that I own. And then I will almost be, almost be caught up with the Disney Twisted Tales books. So I really want to read The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. This is the second book after The Gilded Ones. And I really, really enjoyed The Gilded Ones. So I really would love to pick up the story and continue with it. This also fits quite a few prompts in the Once Upon a Readathon as well. Next up is a book that I've been saying I've been, I was going to read since summer. And I finally have the audiobook for it, so finally I will hopefully finish reading it. I have already started. I'm quite a ways into it already. That is Fourth Throne by Hannah Witten. First book is For the Wolf. I adored it. I don't know why I haven't finished this one yet. It's kind of crazy. Um, so I'm going to prioritize this one this month, definitely. I have another book that I have started and not finished yet. It's in a completely different vein than all of these other books. It is contemporary romance that is not holiday based, but I figure this will be a good transition of all of these books into reading contemporary romance that are holiday based, but that is Sway With Me. I started this this past summer and I just, I put it down for spooky season and now that spooky season is over. I want to just hurry up and finish this so that I can decide if I want to keep it or not. I have this arc and then I also have a finished hardcover copy of it so I want to know if I want to keep it or not. So I will be reading this one. The final physical book that I have that I would love to read is Lily Quinn and the Grimalkin. This is by Danny Swanson. It is a self-published uh, book and I got the entire series from the author. I read the first one, was not the biggest fan, but I believe they get better as they go on. Plus they're really short and I like the concept. So I want to continue with the series. I've been saying I was going to continue with it for a long time, but now hopefully I actually will. We'll see. Now the last leg of this TBR are the audiobooks that I have. So I don't have physical copy for these audiobooks, but 
I'm, I'm very likely going to get to all of these because they're audiobooks and I read audiobooks like nobody's business apparently. I have The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the final book in the Hawthorne Legacy trilogy, which I have been loving the trilogy. I am so excited to finally finish it. It took me so long to get my hands on any form of this book, so I am very excited to read it and finish off the trilogy. Then I have Belladonna, and this is also kind of a leftover from Spooky Season. It was very like last minute but I know it is spooky, but it just doesn't register as spooky as the same. I don't know why, but yeah, I have that one on audiobook, so I'll probably read it. I also have The Ballad of Never After. This is by Stephanie Garber, so this is the book that takes place after Once Upon a Broken Heart, and that follows Jax, the Prince of Hearts, from the Caraval trilogy. So if you are not familiar with that universe, I would recommend reading Caraval. I very much enjoyed it, but if you are, that book that just came out, I have the audiobook for, so I really want to read it. Final book, the last book that I really want to read. I don't have a copy of it physically or audiobook, but I have a hold on it, so hopefully it'll come in, but it's the last book on my autumn TBR that I really want to read, and that is Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. It is like spooky fairy tale vibes, which I think is just perfect for November. So those are all of those books and then like I said probably by the end of November I will be wanting to get into holiday and winter reads so I will be putting together like my winter TBR and things like that so I'll probably get in the mood for those books and I'll probably tax them on at the end there but like I said I'm not gonna get to all these books but I'm sure gonna try my darndest I really want to they all seem like really good books it's it's one of those cases of so many books and so little time which I'm sure we can all relate to. So many books. Okay, let me let me count how many books there are. Okay, that's literally 20 books. 20 books that I want to read in November. Which is just not gonna happen. I have been averaging around 15, maybe slightly more books a month. So theoretically, I could do it because I have some shorter books, but I also do have some longer books. And most of these books that I have been reading in previous months have been audiobooks. So the fact that so many of these are just physical is going to be difficult for me. But, oh well, what can you do? Thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. Comment down below what books you want to finish up in the last month of the autumn or fall season. Also, if you like the kind of content that I make, I would encourage you to subscribe because I post on Sundays and Wednesdays and I will be getting back to a regular posting schedule now that spooky season is over. Oh, I also have bookish social media link down below where you can catch all of these reviews on Goodreads or Instagram and I make TikToks occasionally for fun. So go ahead and follow me on any of those accounts. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you Happy reading!